Reflections on the yield curve. Is this time really different? The day was March 20th, 2006. Ben Bernanke, newly minted Fed chair, strode to the podium at the Economic Club of New York and delivered those famous last words. This time is different. The occasion was just after the three-month T-bill to 10-year Treasury yield curve had inverted at the end of February of that year. And many were wondering at the time if the inverted yield curve was a harbinger of a recession to come. Bernanke concluded no. But to be fair, he didn't exactly say this time is different. He just said that the signal from the yield curve was ambiguous. As we all know now... The recession began just 18 months after Bernanke left the podium in December of 2007, and it was the worst recession of the post-war era. Bernanke wasn't the only one who got it wrong. Many investors missed the recession. Perhaps due to the traumatic events of 2007 to 2009, this time around, investors have adopted the opposite approach, paying rapt attention to the yield curve. And I can't go 10 feet without someone asking about the flattening yield curve and wondering about the implications for the economic outlook. And because of that, we, the Payton Economics team, decided to narrow down many of the misconceptions we hear about the yield curve, and we settled on five common misconceptions. Number one, the yield curve is the perfect business cycle indicator. Well, the yield curve is actually the least bad business cycle indicator. The three-month to 10-year yield curve has an excellent track record in the post-war era. The curve inversion preceded every recession in the post-war era, with one exception, the credit crunch of 1966, where the yield curve inverted without a recession following. But the yield curve has a less than stellar track record before. There are a number of false negatives. And... Globally, yield curves are less useful. For example, in Australia, we've seen yield curve invert three times in the past 27 years without an official recession following. Also, it's worth noting that the time between a yield curve inversion and the start of the recession is long and variable. Last cycle, it was 18 months. On average, it's been 10 to 12 months after an inversion when a recession begins. Number two. People say, okay, inversions aside, a flatter yield curve tells us something important about the economy. Again, we don't think so. We can't find a relationship between the slope of the yield curve and economic growth. Think of it this way. The yield curve has been flattening relentlessly in the past three years, and economic growth has accelerated. The third misconception. People say, okay, forget about inversion. Forget about recession. Forget about whether a flat curve tells us something about GDP growth. The flat curve is going to have an impact on financial markets. And as investors, we have to care about financial markets. Well, again, the devil is in the details. In the last three cycles, after the yield curve flattened through 100 basis points, we are currently at about 90 basis points, both equity markets and credit sectors posted positive total returns up until yield curve inversion. So markets still fared well, even though the curve was flattening. That goes as well for inversion. After inversion up to the start of a recession, equity markets in two out of the last three cycles posted positive total returns. And in three out of the last three cycles leading up to recession, credit sectors posted positive returns. So it's just not true that the yield curve slope and inversion tells you something meaningful about financial markets. Number four, people say, okay, fine, wait for inversion. The curve doesn't tell us much about markets, but you know what? The Fed is afraid of a flatter curve, and so you can keep your head in the sand, but central bankers won't. Well, bad news for the bears. On June 28, 2018, two economists from the Federal Reserve published a post which said, quote unquote, don't fear the yield curve. They went on to say that the twos tens yield curve, which is another measure of yield curve that's out there and popular among traders, has little predictive value. They also suggested that policymakers should focus on the near-term forward spread, which is the spread between implied forward rates on T-bills six quarters out and the current rate on a three-month T-bill. It seems that the near-term spread conveys more information about the path of the economy, the likely path of monetary policy, and is a better predictor of the business cycle than longer-term spreads like the twos tens. 
Number five, people say to us, okay, we hear all that, but stop using the phrase, this time is different, because this time is not different. Nothing is different this time. Oh, really? Nothing's different this time? Not the four and a half trillion dollar Fed balance sheet that did not exist in 2006? Fed research suggests that 10 year treasury yields are 60 basis points lower than they otherwise would be because of the Fed's balance sheet. That could be keeping the curve flatter than it otherwise would be, and that could be muting some of the signal that we otherwise would receive from the yield curve. Bernanke finished his 2006 speech with a nod to the nautical. He said, if you're navigating under uncertainty, you should determine your position frequently and you should use as many guides and landmarks as possible. And in fact, in 2006, we used another guide beyond the yield curve. We liked the leading economic indicators index. Typically, if a recession is around the corner, that index is contracting year on year. And in fact, in the summer of 2006, the leading economic indicators dipped into contractionary territory, corroborating the yield curve's message from earlier that year. Where is the leading economic indicator index today? It's up 6% year on year in positive territory and not signaling a recession in the near future. So yes, it's possible that the yield curve inverts in the months ahead, and it's possible that we enter a recession in the not too distant future. But from where we stand today, the yield curve is still positively sloped. The other indicators which we're checking our bearings with are still pointing to positive growth. That is the leading economic indicators. So we think we have the all clear over the next 12 to 18 months. This is the Payton Economics team signing off. <laughs>